Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining me here today. I'm your host, Jared Taylor. Joining me on the podcast is Brian Cully, the CEO at Lineage Cell Therapeutics. Brian, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on the podcast, Jared. I'm excited. Let's dive right into it. I know the audience would love to hear more about your background. Uh, so my background uh, is that I, I began uh, working in the lab, molecular, cellular, and developmental biology. Um, over the years, I kind of moved into the, the business side. I, I spent some time doing technology licensing and business development before becoming a, a CEO and uh, had an opportunity to be a CEO at this company for just about four, four and a half years now. So, uh, you know, the convergence of science and business, which I'm fortunate that I get to use every single day. And for for our audience that, you know, maybe hasn't heard of, of Lineage Cell Therapeutics. Can you give us a, a general overview of, of the company, um, Drugs and Pipeline, where you're at today? Yeah, of course. So uh, Lineage Cell Therapeutics is a cell therapy company. It's a publicly traded company. So I would like to just add that uh, in case I make some forward-looking statements, people can learn more about uh, the risks of investing in Lineage through our filings with the SEC. Um, as a cell therapy company, what we do is we manufacture specific types of cells of the human body. And we do what we call replace and restore. So if you have a cell type that is diseased or missing or dysfunctional, we wanna manufacture those cells and replace them in your body in order to restore the function that you've lost. And we now have uh, five programs for five different cell types uh, that, we're, that we're pursuing. And, and talk us through, you, you had a, a pretty cool uh, licensing deal with, uh you know, only one of the, the most well-known <laughs> uh, companies in your space. Can you talk a little bit about that? You know, what was that deal um, and, you know, how, how things are going today with that? Yeah, that was that was a really big event for us. So uh, the deal was with Roche and, and in particular their, their, uh, their Genentech division. Um, it was a uh, what's called a, a biobox deal of $670 million and we received $50 million up front uh, we still retain some rights to the program. We have double digit royalties on, on future sales, but Roche is, is paying for substantially all of the development going forward. So, I mean, you know, this is the number one company in ophthalmology as far as I'm concerned. And, and I think there's a lot of evidence to support that. So we're really fortunate to be able to partner with them on uh, our lead program. And the uh, rationale there is we're manufacturing what are called RPE cells. So this is one of the specialized cells of the human retina we can manufacture enormous numbers of these cells and we can transplant them into the eye of a patient who's suffering from age-related macular degeneration, specifically dry form of age-related macular degeneration. And the reason why that's important is it's one of the leading causes of blindness. And the, the, what's happening is that people are essentially outliving their RPE cells. These RPE cells die off. And if they're, if they're no longer present, they can't help you see. And so you start to lose your vision. In particular, you lose your central vision. So you can't, you know, you can't watch TV, you can't look at your cell phone, you can't read a book, and it just gets worse and worse. Progressive disease, really horrible disease. Uh, and our approach is really different than traditional approaches. Rather than squirting small molecules or antibodies in, into people's bodies, we just manufacture the replacement parts that are missing. So we make brand new RPE cells and those brand new RPE cells that we manufacture are delivered to the eye. Uh, they're functional and we've seen some really exciting clinical data with this approach. And that led to us being connected with Roche and them wanting to uh, be involved in this program as, you know, potentially a, a, a totally new paradigm for how to treat this disease. Well, kudos to you and your team. That's that's quite the accomplishment. And uh, I know you're just getting started, right? There's a lot of exciting things that that you're engaged in. Tell us a little bit about your, your technology platform. Yeah, the, um, the, the interesting thing is we start with uh, pluripotent stem cells. And the reason why that's important is that these cells are, they're sort of like uh, their starting material. They can become any of the cell types of the human body. Um, you know, there's over 200 cell types in the human body, kidney, heart cells, muscle, everything you could think of. Uh, and these cells, they haven't decided what they're going to be when they grow up, right? They're pure blank slates but they're capable of being anything. And if you give them the right instructions, you can actually force them to become just one type of cell. And so that's what we do with the RPE cells. We start with these 
undifferentiated stem cells and we grow them into huge numbers and then we run them through a process. You can think of it like a recipe. We just run them through a recipe and we say, look, we're going to only make RPE cells. They're all going to be differentiated. They're all going to be functional. They're going to be viable. And that becomes the medicine. And so the technology is, is really built around creating those recipes to manufacture specific types of cells and be able to do it exactly the same way every single time, be able to do it at a huge scale so that you can actually treat patients in large numbers and so forth. That's really the core technology. It is a directed differentiation process by which we can manufacture specific types of cells and then use them in various settings like the loss of, dry, uh, loss of RPE cells for, for vision loss. And what are some of the competitive advantages to this approach? Well, the biggest advantage that we have right now is that the clinical effect that we are seeing with our replace and restore approach is far beyond what any other approach has shown. So if, uh, if I could just describe the, the setting of dry MD, there's this little spot, a little dot in the back of the eye where you've got these dead cells and it'll grow, it'll expand. It's kind of like a, a wildfire expanding outward. And the approaches that are being utilized today really try and slow the expansion, right? So, so you can think of blindness as a, as a cliff and you got a car going 100 miles an hour and everyone out there is trying to tap the brakes and slow the car a little bit so that you reach blindness later. What we've been able to show by transplanting cells is we can throw the car into park or even reverse. We can literally show that after several months, the area of injury is smaller. The reason why that's extraordinary is that human beings cannot do that naturally. Nobody ever heals their, their area of retina from this disease spontaneously. Now, every once in a while, somebody has a, a tumor and it might just go away. And that's fantastic and wonderful, but it does not happen in the setting of dry AMD. So when we see people whose area of atrophy gets smaller or stops getting larger compared to what's the best available uh, you know, in development technology, it's really obvious that we're having a massive clinical benefit in those patients. So it's a, it's an enormous event uh, advantage and notably, you know, this is with a single administration. So unlike some of the ophthalmology uh, uh, drugs that are out there where you get uh, injected into the eyeball every month, which is a real pain and compliance is a, is a challenge. We're talking about a single administration. So kind of like gene therapy, but instead of using a gene, we're actually replacing the cell. Super interesting. And, Talk us through, Brian, some of the, the clinical programs that you currently um, have in development today and, you know, where are they at? What, what advancements are, are happening? There are uh, five programs. There's five different cell types that we're manufacturing today. So I, I've already talked about the RPE cells in the retina, but we actually also make photoreceptors. So we have two ophthalmology programs. Uh, only one of them has been partnered uh, to date. So we, we continue to develop the photoreceptors and that's for different kinds of vision loss that people can suffer from. We also are manufacturing oligodendrocyte progenitors, which are cells that are part of and make up part of your spinal cord. So if somebody has a spinal cord injury and they lose those cells, they're, they're, the cells are destroyed and damaged. If we replace those cells, we may be able to re regain mobility in patients. And that program's in the clinic now. We've treated 30 patients. It's been really exciting. Uh, I've sat with some of those patients and, and talked about, uh, you know, with them about their experiences on the study. And a lot of them believe that they're they're getting a benefit from our cells. So that's a really, really compelling program and, and an emotional one because it's it's usually you know, young men you know, riding their mountain bikes or whatever, surfing, and they there are car accidents. And, you know, all of a sudden they can't move their arms and legs. And then, you know, they go through this therapy and, and some of them are getting more recovery than you might expect. So that's been a really exciting program. We also recently started a program in uh, hearing loss. So we're manufacturing auditory neurons. So these are the neurons that are just inside of the hair cells in your ear. And when you lose those cells, of course, you know, you're talking about deafness. And so if we can replace those cells and restore function, restore hearing, that's a, an enormous worldwide problem. So we're really talking about areas of the body where traditional approaches haven't really worked. And we're trying something very different and very new by just replacing those parts and, and seeing if we can help people get better clinical outcomes from that approach. What would you say some of the, the near term uh, milestones are for lineage that, that you're you know, really working towards? 
Well, we're definitely excited to be supporting uh, Roche with the, the phase two trial that they're running. So that, that, that study that they've started, which is um, follows the one that we ran, uh, that's going to be 30 to 60 patients. And it has a short follow-up. It's just a 90-day follow-up because they're looking for those anatomical changes. So the primary and secondary endpoints in that trial are, are all 90 days. So it's, it's pretty short. So I'm, I'm excited about making sure that we, we help them with, uh, with the sites and the enrollment and, and get more data from that program and, and really help people see what's possible with this approach. Uh, in addition, we, uh, we are going to get our spinal cord program into clinical testing uh, this year. And, and that's gonna be really exciting. We're, we're actually working on a new delivery system. So the old way of delivering cells to patients with spinal cord injury, it's kind of complicated. And there's this big scaffold that sits over the patient. We've got this cute little device now that's actually attached to the patient. And what's really great about it is it, it moves up and down as the cells are going into the patient in that one-time injection. So you don't have to disconnect the patient from the respirator. Obviously, you know when you do that, you've got like, 60 seconds, so you got to get the cells in. But with this device, it's actually attached to the patient moving with the respiration. You can take five or six minutes to put the cells in. So we think it'll be safer and, and maybe it'll better be better. Um, we also have this, uh, this auditory neuron program that I just described. It's just going into animal testing now. And so that preclinical testing is going to be really exciting to see what, uh, what we learned this year because it, it only took us about a year and, and actually only about a million dollars, less than a million dollars to be able to invent that program, to, to decide, let's go after auditory neurons and actually manufacture them and be able to start preclinical testing. So really fast, super efficient use of capital. So very excited for, for all of those programs. We, we also have an oncology program where we manufacture dendritic cells and we're expecting to see some data from a partner that we have on that program as well. So that was our, our fifth cell type that we manufacture. Well, Brian, uh Thank you so much for for sharing your story and what you're doing with uh, Lineage Cell Therapeutics. I, I really hope we can have you on again in the near future on a panel or something. We can dig more into the the business, but uh, really exciting these these advancements that you're working on uh, and these clinical programs. We're really excited to continue to follow your progress and, and stay in touch. Hey, I appreciate that, Jared. I feel like we're just scratching the surface on a, on a whole new branch of medicine. So yeah, we're going to have some cool news this year and uh, I'd love to come back and talk about it.